When designers and engineers don't use GD&T on a washing machine or cellular phone, I guess it isn't a big deal. The result is a lot of scrap and wasted effort at the company, but no one dies. What really ticks me off is when the folks designing medical devices, military hardware, and other products that affect life and limb don't do it right. Here's an example from a commercial aircraft. This is a case study of a part called a throttle pulley sector used on a commercial airline. You see it rotating here. It rides in two ball bearings, then on a shaft. When this actuator is moved, the throttle pulley sector rotates. These two cables go back to the engines, and so they control the speed of the engine. These guide pins are here to make sure that these cables never come off the throttle pulley sector. So the critical gap is between the throttle pulley sector radius out here and the guide pins. We don't want this to come off. And the way that is checked is with a no-go gauge. As long as the gauge doesn't go, the gap isn't too large. If the inspector misses that, or doesn't check it all along that radius, the result is that these cables could walk right off the pulley. If that happens, the engines die, and, well, you can figure out what happens next. The original drawing looked like this. I've redrawn it, cleaned it up a little bit. But they had this radius of 7.064 directly toleranced. In other words, the plus or minus 5 down here applied to the 7064. The trouble is we don't know where the center of the 7064 is. You might guess that it's in the center of these bearing pockets, but there's nothing on this drawing to tell us that. Also, the bearing pockets were machined in one setup, and then they would refixture the part to machine the radius in another setup. So off times, the center of the radius was not right at the center of the bearing pocket. The solution is to identify these bearing pockets as your primary datum feature, as you can see here. I'm calling it datum feature A, 2x, so the two pockets establish a common axis that the pulley can then pivot around. On that critical radius and on these v-grooves, we have a profile tolerance of 10 thousandths. Now this 7064 isn't directly toleranced. It's a basic dimension, which means that's the goal. And the tolerance of 10 thousandths is on the surface with respect to the axis established by A. One way you might think about inspecting this would be with a drop indicator. I would master the indicator at the 7.064 and then I could either sweep the critical radius with the indicator or I could hold the indicator stationary and rotate the part underneath the indicator you know the way the part functions it would be rotating about the axis of the two bearing pockets and when I do that the indicator could not move more than plus 5 or minus 5 because with profile the number in the box is always total and it's implied centered on the basic goal unless you're told otherwise. What could be simpler? And why wouldn't you do it this way? Because it only has one meaning, especially since this can affect life and limb. The entire shape of the end of the throttle pulley sector with the V-grooves could easily be checked with a simple fixture and an optical comparator. Next time, I think I'll take the bus. If your products affect lives and safety, Please learn how to control your part geometry with GD&T. You know, the stuff that most engineering colleges do not teach. If you need help with it, give Techies a call because at Techies, GD&T rules. I'll see you next tip.